fine then thank you we'll start the session now okay and uh, good evening and good morning guys my name is chandra i was the instructor for the course okay i had 11 years of it industry experience okay and even we have a 3 plus years of an uh, teaching experience into the online and we have an almost an uh, 5 years nearly into the training field as well okay it's a kind of a part time we are doing all these trainings fine then so coming to this aws before we start in aws so i just want to hear you from guys so anybody from like you know you haven't start your career anybody has a pressures here in this session or you can able to uh, give in a quick round of introduction from you like i just need your name and which technology you are working and how many years of experience if you are in a pressure just mention that thanks ram you mentioned as a pressure i can understand that so i mean can you go in the queue like anyone else can start Yeah, Chandra, this is Pawan. Yeah, it's a Pawan. Go ahead, Pawan. Yeah, yeah. I I work uh, for CSE as a test manager. Right. So, yeah. Thanks, Pawan. And how many years of experience we have? Overall, I have uh, around ten. Okay, excellent. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, uh, Raju. Hi, everyone. Go ahead. Go ahead. uh hi there is a voice issue means i can't hear clearly that's why guys you have to be in mute and whoever is going to talk they have to unmute and talk that will be easy for everyone fine hi, i'm go ahead i'm chain gv okay uh, i'm a devops engineer having the knowledge and uh, hands on experience in one year in right now working in qualcom okay um you know actually i had a linux academy aws session you know earlier mm -hmm. but uh, right now we are not using in uh, aws because right. it's migrating from physical environment to aws right so i need to upgrade myself so that's purpose i am approaching you right then excellent thank you thanks and uh, anybody else chiranjeevi done thank you and lingachari ragu hi chandra this is ragu yeah, go ahead ragu uh, for aws i'm the fresher okay and uh, for windows x i have around 6 years right then thank you ragu uh, linga lingachari hi sir yeah go ahead Yes, sir. I was uh, new to the IT field, sir. I have experience into the accounts field only. Right. I was MBA graduate in 2013. Right. Then I can consider you as a fresher. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. I'm Venu Vamshi Sadasivan. Yeah. Go ahead. Hi. Venu. This is Venu. Go ahead, Venu. Yeah, Venu. I have uh, five years of experience in Linux. Okay. Excellent. And I work with CS. Just I wanted to update my knowledge in uh, AWS. Sure. Uh, thank you, Venu. Yeah, myself, uh, Sadasiva. Okay. So I have uh, experience in. Sorry, I have experience in uh, middleware administrator, in web pro. So I want to upgrade myself uh, in AWS. Right, Shiva. Thank you. And we have left only with Vamshi. Yeah, my name is Vamshi. Uh, I am working in system administration. I have two two years of experience. Right, Vamshi. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So anybody else? I missed it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your introduction. Okay. So now we will start about here. I can see uh, like you know few of the people from the system administration background. So I can see only three people as a precious here. Okay. just allow me for 2 minutes at least 2 to 5 minutes maximum so that i can cover all the basic requirements so that everybody will be in the same page then we'll start okay so as a fresher like ram vamshi you have done a 2 years experience and uh, somebody mentioned like navin i guess so he is an account uh, i'm an accounts background so guys to make you understand uh, for the first 5 minutes i'm going to spend here so 
anybody for example navin you mentioned you are working in a accounts industry right somebody mentioned is a quality engineer somebody mentioned from a different different domains okay so in whatever the domain we are working so why you are working is there any specific reason for that right so you can see in the technology wise you have n number of technologies so what is the ultimate objective for each and every resource to provide that particular client 100% success rate right we have to make sure that particular business to be up and running as always without having any downtime right so we can say that yes, particular sir. server should bring an up up and i mean up and running as always that's what our main objective right so in our olden days like in 1980s or uh, before that also we don't have any latest technologies we have only a physical server concept right so in this physical server you will be able to run only on one application you will not be able to run any multiple applications on any server so you have in a physical server that physical server you have to run only one application are you able to understand me this point particular point okay if you want i can give an example in your mobile itself you are running in multiple applications right now right but in the olden days we don't have this kind of facility you have to run one application using one physical server that physical server let's assume it it may cost you in a 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs or 50 lakhs whatever the cost it is so this much of money you spend but still you are limited to run only one application on your mission apart from this server again you need in a database storage networking to keep your server up and running right so still we required other computing services as well so where we are going to keep this all your computing services that is called your data center everybody knows what is data center so shall i take it as a yes if anybody is not aware of it just let me know so that i can uh, uh, try to elaborate it more okay so not only data uh, ram we can keep all our equipments in one location that is called our data center right where you are going to store your servers right that is called your data center so not only server again it will have in you know, all the equipments like in hardware related equipments it will be located in one location that is called a data center so now okay you have a server you have a data center and everything is working fine right now if you can provide a guarantee to the client your server it won't go offline by any chance can you able to provide that kind of guarantee to the client now anybody i can see somebody has a 10 years of experience so can you please try to interact here so that the session will be good tell me what is the question again so i'm just mention i have my data center i have one physical server everything is up and running right now so if my client is asking us so can you able to provide an 100% guarantee my application won't go by any chance so as an engineer no, we as an as a we, can, we can't give it right Thank no we you. can't right so we will not be able to provide a guarantee to the client we will not be able to give a 100% guarantee to running one mission so to provide a better solution what is the best way we have is there any alternative way with us Uh, cluster mechanism to give the to avoid the single point of failure right so we have to provide a better solution so we have to think about alternative way for that again we have to build we have to give one more physical server because we don't have any virtualization in initial days right we have to keep one more physical okay. server in this case let's assume your first physical server it will cost you in 50 lakhs again you have to invest in a 50 lakhs to buy a one more server then you have to keep it each and everything should be a similar like your server 1 to server 2 okay then again you have to keep it everything as a redundancy like power networking and each and everything now let's assume it you have two servers you have one data center it's providing a solution to the client now can you able to give a guarantee to the people 100% yes no. we can't give a guarantee to the client but if you compare with an last solution still we can given a some percentage of portion we can given a high right 
but still there are chances yes. it may go offline right to avoid these kind of situations we have to keep it our secondary data center that is called our disaster recovery data center right yeah so coming to this point if you have in a two servers or four servers to to serve one single application in your data center one when you are talking about disaster recovery you have to keep it as a mirror of your data center it means whatever you configured on your first data center or primary data center right you have to do everything in your disaster data center got it you have to keep it each and everything as a mirror copy on your secondary data center so what will happen here your cost is going to be double right how much money you spend for your primary data center build each and everything you are going to repeat in your data center too got it is it clear guys so that your yes, cost sir. it will get double right when you compare this option whatever you created your disaster recovery data center you are not sure when you are going to use it until unless your primary data center went offline then only you need your disaster recovery data center otherwise you don't required it got it but you cannot say it doesn't require because we have seen an example in last two years back i can say in last ne nearly in a two and a half year right now so i hope everybody remember uh, chennai uh, issue like in chennai we had enough floods right everybody remember that is that true yeah okay just yes, if you yes. if you want to make it clear about it i can give an example for example you are running a i mean let's okay i, I hope everybody knows about ola ola caps right let's think about if ola running their data center based on chennai location let's assume it ola data center is located in chennai they are running their they are running their caps in entire india right if something happens to that particular location like something happens to your data center will you able to book your cab from bangalore got it no from delhi it's impossible gurgaon pune there is no issues in this areas only in chennai location there was an issue understand everybody as a being yes. a fresher so freshers do you have any questions guys here no so anybody is having any question just let me know you can easily understand this because even you have installed in your mobile okay in your mobile is working fine your internet also is working fine but where they have hosted this application that particular server should be up and running then only you will be able to access this app whatever you have installed in your mobile here okay so due to this chennai location issue like in a data center issue we will not be able to book any cab from across the globe across the india we can say got it to overcome these kind of scenarios only we required our secondary data center okay now after some time i mean after many years so technology has been grown up into the virtualization so everybody knows about virtualization how it works yes anybody is not aware of it just let me know so that i can elaborate that if everybody knows about it i can skip it okay i can give in a simple words now if you are talking about a virtualization how it works physically like we have only physical server earlier once the technology has been like once the virtualization has been introduced so what you can do you can virtually split your physical machine into n number of virtual machines right whatever the resources you have in your physical server that you can split into your n number of servers the best example your laptops right if you want to install linux virtual machines in your laptop yes you can do that but to require it's required na cpu storage and everything from where you are going to assign it from your laptop only so it is in a, your physical server is your laptop so from there you are going to create in a virtual machines 
So you are going to save the resources which you have in your physical server into your virtual machines. Is it clear, guys? Yeah. Is it clear? Yes. Thank you. Now, what are the challenges we have in a physical and virtualization technologies? Even we have in a physical infrastructure, we have some problems. Then we have been identified virtualization. Still, we are talking about other solutions like cloud. So why we have to think about it? What are the challenges we have in a physical IT infrastructure? So these many challenges we have. I'm just giving an example here, right? Even if it is a virtualization also, your virtualization has been enabled, but still that that particular physical server, it may have some count, okay? For example, what are the physical server you have? You can create virtually 200 servers or 100 servers, whatever it might be. Just take an example for 100. So more than 100 virtual machines, you will not be able to make it using one physical server. Is that right? So in this case, whenever you reach 100 servers, so what do you have to do? That's an example. You have already running in 100 virtual machines in one of the physical mission. You got a requirement from your application team to do some testing. They need one virtual mission. So how we can proceed it? Obviously, you have to reach your client to arrange one more physical server. Based on that, again, you are going to create a one more one more virtual mission, right? So your customer has to spend the money again for the physical server and the location. Uh, if it is enabled in a disaster recovery, then they have to look for another server as well. Like this, your cost is going to be up. Like we have many issues like in you know, a space, power, regular maintenance, each and everything you have to buy and you have to build it yourself, right? You can go in a bit elaborated way, power per cabinet, disaster recovery, everything we need in a money, right? To overcome these kind of situations, I mean, people is thinking about the solution for that, then cloud has been entered into the market. So somebody has just mentioned here, they are already working into the uh, DevOps rules. Okay, and the rest of everybody is learning it. So can anyone tell me like what is cloud? A simple and uh, short answer. Anyone knows that? A group of servers. Only servers? Okay, so... It's a service provider, sir. Sorry? Service provider. Okay, let me tell you. So now we have an, uh, multiple options here in the cloud. Okay, so I hope everybody knows about earlier Gmail, right? Before Google Cloud, everybody knows about Gmail, but why it's not an, it's not called Google Cloud? It's only Gmail. Okay, so there are limitations to provide the services. They are providing limited services earlier. That's why it's only Gmail. That's why it's only Google. Now they have entered into the Google Cloud. Okay, we'll try to explain more about it. But coming to the cloud, any cloud service provider, if you want to become a cloud service provider, you have to provide a minimum six to seven services, then only you will become a cloud service provider. So on top of it here, the first thing, pay as you go model. So you should not ask any vendors to pay the money initially, right? Let them allow your clients to use the services, then collect the money at the end and the end of the month and pay as you go model. So there is no capital investment. Let them use the services. They can pay the money. What are the services they have used and how many number of hours they have been used and unlimited storage, right? On demand and self-service, at least in a monitoring tool, at least in a monitoring service, and notification as a service, email as a service, and the most important is scaling, right? When you are running your own data centers, like in a physical data center, when you need an additional services, again, you have to buy, right? For example, whenever your service is, I mean, your web server is getting more overloaded, when you, when you need an additional CPU or memory, right? You have to assign that it manually. 
when it's getting a less workload again you have to reduce and you have to remove that from that particular server okay you have to do that in manually is that right any linux admin also can answer it got it is that true so for example so any of the e-commerce website like in a flipkart or amazon let's assume it they are getting more workload only on the weekends so obviously you need enough more resources on it right and uh, similarly let's assume it from monday to friday they don't have less workload so they have to reduce the resources which you have been assigned so this it can be do in a manually so instead of that in auto scaling you can set up the requirements so it will take care of each and everything so even server launch server termination you don't require any teams so earlier you might aware of it we have in a server build teams like rfc teams that everybody remember i mean knows about it there is a bigger companies called an ibm pro <coughs> cts so they are keeping earlier only a server build teams if any project having a requirement to build in a 20 servers 200 servers 2000 servers this particular team is responsible for that they are not going to look for the regular bau activities they will be involved only on the server builds so like that also we have a teams right now it doesn't require because we will be we will be able to build the server within 2 minutes i will show you that okay so these many features is required then only they will call as a cloud service provider so, and you can see these many teams are there earlier right the senior engineers can answer here we have an middleware database security networking operating system storage backup like this we have these many technologies each and every team again we have l1 l2 l3 supports and smes senior smes right like that but right now we don't required this many teams it is going to be reduce the workload okay and these are the advantages we have guys so there is no like a less or no capital expenditure if you use in a cloud and pay as you go model you no need to pay anything as an extra you just pay as you used and shared resources which i have already discussed it so where there is one physical server if you want to use it yourself you have to spend the whole money so instead of that here you are going to launch one virtual virtual mission you no need to worry about the whole physical mission cost we can pay only for the that particular virtual mission cost so just an example you can compare with again with you know, uh, your cab services right earlier like in the olden days when you wanted to when you need in a car you have to buy it there is no other option right after some time you got on a lease or daily rental concept right right now you no need to take it as a per day rent also okay whenever you want on demand whenever you want from where to where wherever you want travel it so you no need to worry about the any other cost you can book a cab and wherever you want you can travel it and you can pay the money after you use the cab service and again pay as you go model it's only for the minimum price right you are not thinking about the regular maintenance nothing right still that is is already happening but still they have also got introduced there is a different concept shared pool shared ride i hope everybody knows about it right if you book a cab from 10 kilometers earlier you are paying in 100 rupees right now you are going to pay only 70 rupees got it but here you just need to allow someone to travel along with you okay and dynamic scaling so when you can we have just mentioned for example flipkart let's assume it they are running in a 500 servers in regular days when they need additional servers when they need when they are getting more business like they are going to announce some big billion days kind of concepts so this particular time they need more servers to run their environment to run their applications so these cases earlier they have in a server build teams to be available that particular team to, to be responsible to build all the servers to make sure all the uh security checks and everything on that activity day everything should be up and running so activity has been completed within 3 days 
let's assume it they have built additionally 300 servers after this activity they don't require this many servers so what they are going to do now they have to decommission otherwise they have to keep on running that in an entire year without using that also they have to pay the money even they are decided to decommission also they have to follow the process it will consume time and as well as they have to pay the money for that project also right so instead of that here we have a technology called auto scaling whenever you need an additional instance which is mentioned as a time or you can mention as a your existing resources utilization so based on that any criteria it will launch the instance or it will terminate the instance automatically based on your requirement for example if you mention morning 10 o'clock there is an additional instance to be launched and it should get terminated by evening 4 pm it will work and if you mention my whenever my cpu utilization has reached 80 percent of the utilization let's spin on two instances and it, it will get a spin off by whenever my cpu utilization is less than 50 percent that is also can be done and deployment time we can launch an instance here within two minutes i will show you that okay like this we have many ways here i mean many other uh, uh, advantages here so i don't want to waste more time here we have cloud service layers we have three layers application as a service platform as a service infrastructure as a service so in this course we are going to consider and concentrate more on infrastructure as a service okay if you are running your traditional it infrastructure you have to take care of each and everything like your applications data runtime everything when you are moving into the amazon with infrastructure as a service you have to take care of only your applications and data right and as a service provider amazon will take care of your servers networking storage virtualization all the technologies okay now any any questions up to here guys from anyone so we are following right then thank you <clears throat> and again this is an old slide but still i'm talking about it okay so as per the market so i hope everybody knows about it what is happening in the market that's why you have been enrolled for this session thank you and as per the market like you know this is an information i have been collected from the forbes, Ma forbes magazine so even if you want you can type in google forbes magazine was written there n number of jobs are getting affected due to the cloud skills right but if you know the cloud skills, any of the cloud technology, so there are n number of openings in the market that you know we need to discuss about it. But similarly, you can see the pay about the certification if you complete it. The course which are going to design, we are going to discuss here. Amazon Web Services Certified Solution Architect Associate One. Okay, if this is the one the is paid salary in the year of 2016 as well even if you want i can pay here sorry okay you can type like this it will take you to here so this is another right so if you open for a different slide it will take you into the uh, yeah is in a Forbes magazine right you can cross check all these things so I just collected that in as image I just keep it here right this is in 2017 as well okay fine then so now to learn this course Anyone can learn, any of the IT professional can learn because somebody just mentioned I was a Unix administrator. Somebody mentioned from Windows administrator. Here we have all the technologies, right? Even we have in a storage backup and everything. Maybe as of now, you are an expert into the storage, but you have to learn other things now. So anyone can learn this. 
So now if you're talking about why only Amazon, why can't you know, other technologies, right? So Amazon is leading the market at the moment. So they have 70% of the market. So this is an, again, it's low old slide guys. So it's an, almost 70% of the market and rest of the 30% it has been occupied by all the other vendors, right? So if you are running anything in the leading, in the leading of the market, so obviously you will get more number of opportunities. So anything you want to know here? So before we start any technical uh, thing, here if you want me to talk, we have many options like you know who, I um, mean, okay. So these are the two guys has been invented Amazon Web Services, right? So it has been started in the year of six, but officially it was in a 2016, sorry, 2006. Right now we are into the 2017. It's almost 11 years of journey right now. Okay. I will skip this. So here we'll work as a real time what we are doing it in the project. I'm going to explain that. So coming to the global infrastructure, Amazon is keeping their locations like in a 44 locations, right? Okay, they have 16 regions with 44 availability zones at the moment. So everybody knows about everybody knows about data center, right? Now here yes. your data center is equals to your availability zone. Let me tell you. For example, this is your availability zone. It's equals to a data center, right? This is one of your data center. Right now they have multiple availability zones in one single location. Got it? This is my region. So in this region, they have multiple availability zones. For example, in India, we have a region called Mumbai. It has been launched 27th of June 2016. Okay. Currently, in we have Mumbai region, two availability zones only. One at Chennai and another one is Mumbai. But if you compare with North Virginia, we have a six availability zones. In Singapore, we have three. Like this, so these many availability zones we have with 16 geographic regions. Okay. And what are the services we are using? I mean, we are going to use that it may available any one region. It may not available any one region, any other regions we can say. Okay. In this 16 regions again, so two regions is completely dedicated to the US government. This is not available for you when you're trying to work, when you're working actually. So here, if you want, you can count only on 14 regions. But if you see here, we are talking about in a 16. So rest of the two availability zones is not available for you because these two regions is completely dedicated to the US government, right? So this is not available for you. So but when you're going to appear an exam, the count is 16 is on right answer. Right, but when you're, when you're working actually, so it will be displayed only for 14. Right, like this, if you want me to speak more, still we have an IWS security and all other stuff. Okay, I don't want to waste you or time here. So I, I wanted to hear something about you guys from now. So if you have any questions or you have any expectations, if not, I will take you into the real time, like in how you're going to work in the console. Anything as of now related? Whatever we discussed in this, if you have any questions, just shoot your questions right now. If you want, I can take at the end again the questions. Okay, anybody? No. No. no all, good. all good. Shall I proceed? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. So now, guys, some people will call VM, virtual machine, server, right? So in the, in, in the cloud, we are talking about an instance. What are the server you're going to launch? That is called an instance we are talking about here. Now, once you have connected this particular server, so I will be, I will be sharing 
the course content as well as how to create your AWS free tier account. Okay. Here Amazon is giving some options so that you can create your accounts. Just cross check this URL, AWS Amazon.com slash free, right? So that you can set up your account so that you can do the practice as well. So that we can help you out how to set up all these things. It's required either your debit card or credit card details. If you are going to create your accounts from India, it will be deducted from you in a two rupees. Okay. And again, that will be uh, reverse you. I mean, I mean, it will revert you back in the same day. It's required your Gmail ID and as well as other debit card or credit card details. Even if you use credit card or debit card details, the money won't be deducted automatically. You will get a reminder. So you have to pay from your end. Right? What are the services you are going to use? Now here they have listed what are the services they are going to give it as a free for you to do to learn the things. Once you cross this limit, it will be chargeable. Right? So this is the dashboard for AC2. Now here, guys, we have many services here. Right? So we can say 80 plus services we have and still uh, they are running a program called reinvent right now. So they are going to release a few uh, few more uh, 20 services soon. OK, so now here we have a service called an EC2. It's an elastic compute cloud. So here only we can see how you're going to launch servers, how you're going to work. OK, an IP address, storage, snapshots, load balancer auto scaling everything comes under in this particular service so this particular page like in north virginia this is one of the region this is my dashboard if you want me to see that in a mumbai so i have to change the region like this go here and change the region so this is for my mumbai region let's see here i don't have any instance right now so i'm going back to north virginia here i have two instance right you have seen the difference right so it's not across all your access it's not similar it's like in a region level region level of access is different and again what are the services you are going to see here it's again depending on the region see here we have a scheduled instance tab so totally we have a six tabs here we have a scheduled instance if you go back to mumbai region we don't have a scheduled instance option here Clear? Anybody? Are you able to follow me? Yes. Okay. Yes. That, that is what I just yes. mentioned. The services which you have that it may available in one region, it may not available in another region. I just mentioned that somewhere. Okay. Forget about that now. Now here we have another solutions. I mean like an understanding for you here. We have a service called EFS in Mumbai region. Okay to make you a better understanding. So now see here EFS is not available in Mumbai region. It will be available on this region. So like this. These are the differences will be there. Right now I'm moving into the North Virginia region. So here EC2 is the service. If you want you can see these many services we have. So what are the services you want to work that you can keep it like this and you can drag it. Right. So I have selected like this an EC2. Now we are on an EC2 page. OK, so now I'm going to show you how to launch an instance guys. Fine, go here instance. Right now I have two instances up and running. I'm going to launch new one. Here we have these are the ISO images like predefined ISO images as a Linux admin can tell me like if you wanted to launch any new instance how we can proceed. Somewhere you should have an ISO image right or you you have have. we should have that or else you can take a snapshot of your any of the existing running instance right. Yes. Similarly here. Amazon is keeping us this many ISO images. You can see Amazon Linux, Red Hat, Susie Linux, Ubuntu, okay, and Hello. other Windows machines as well. Thank you. 
and other Windows ISO images as well. Right now, I'm going to select Amazon Linux. Now, once you selected this ISO image, still you need another CPU or memory requirements, right? For that, we are calling about is an instance type. Here, Amazon has kept predefined uh, configuration setup here, like one CPU, one GB memory, and you can see four CPUs and 16 GB memory, 32 GB memory, like 64, 128, 192, 384. Okay, even if you can scroll down, you can see it's a 488, 732 GB. Okay. Still scroll it, you can see 976. Now here we have 1952 GB, right? So three months back, they have launched new instance called 3904 GB. So almost we can say it's in a two TB instance. This is for a four TB instance, right? And again, in this two TB, they have uh, two different variations, 64 and 128. Memory is same, and the process is getting changed. Like this they have. So now you can select anyone, but if you selected other than T2 micro, it will be chargeable for you. Whatever they mention in AWS free tier account, they have mentioned it's only for T2 micro instance. Okay. Other than this, if you selected anyone, that will be chargeable for you. Now I'm moving it. I'm just moving further. Here you have to mention how many instance you want. You want to launch a network. You have to keep it in a default right now. So as I mentioned, in this particular location, we have six availability zone. So which one you want, you can select it. Where you are going to launch an instance, you are giving an instructions. So I'm selecting US East 1A. Okay. Now auto assign public IP. So earlier when you are going to work in your organizations, you have a security or network team, right? When you wanted to build any server, you have to reach the people, then get an IP address. Is that correct? You yes, are, that's true. Okay. You are on a Linux administrator or a Windows administrator, whatever it might be. If you want, you know, if you want to build a server, you should get a IP address. So you have to reach for the other team. Now here, you don't need to reach anyone. As we discussed, it's an on-demand self-service, right? So I don't want to discuss with anyone. So what Amazon has did here, they have kept in a bunch of IP address in the pool. So whenever you are going to launch any instance, it will definitely give you an IP address. But you are not sure which is the IP address you are going to get or even which is the IP address range you are going to get it. But definitely it will give an IP address for you. Right? Now we can say shutdown behavior. I'll be keeping the stop mode and enable termination protection. So if you wanted to enable like a termination protection of this particular server, we can select this. So until unless you remove this option, no one will not be able to terminate this particular server. And monitoring, I hope everybody knows about what is monitoring. Okay. Now, if you want to keep your server into the monitoring, you can select in a one single checkbox. If you want, you can do that individually also. We'll do that later. And tenancy, whether this servers where you're going to build that is in a virtual machines you need or you need in a physical servers or you already having a physical server. If you select in a shared where there is a physical server, it will be sharing with n number of people from there. It's going to launch one virtual machines for you. Right. If you need in a physical server, you can select that. The other one, if you want, you already have in a physical server. From there, you are going to launch all your virtual missions. We can select that. I'm going to select on a shared right now. Add storage. What are the ASV image we selected initially? To keep it that, it will took automatically required storage option, right? So required storage size. So Amazon Linux, it's taken a 8 GB. If you select Red Hat Linux, it will take a 10 GB. So based on the requirement, it will show. But still, if you want, you can allow to extend this size. Don't try to reduce the size. You know, right? Why? I mean, if you reduce it, what will happen? Tags. Here, you can add a number of tags to the server. You can add up to 50 tags per a server. 
So maybe you can keep server one, server two, server three as a name. But still, if you want to keep it, it's in a production server. If it is an internet banking server, okay, it is in a payment gateway server. Like that, if you want to get, add anything, we can add it here. And configure security group. So if you wanted to communicate this particular server through SSH or through, we will be able to do it now. Partition. If you want to make this server as a web server, you need an HTTP or HTTPS that we can select like this. We go here, we can select and the protocol automatically to take and custom anywhere my IP we have. So we are going to connect this in a publicly. So we are going to select select an anywhere. So where you can see 000, it's in a public. So you'll be able to communicate directly from anywhere. Review and launch. This is in a review page, guys. So I'm going to launch this. So I'm making this. These are my existing keys. So this is also one of the important point. So I'm going to create a new key here. I'm making this. Okay, the key name. I'm just ma making it like a AWS demo. Let it be. Now I'm going to create a new key like this. Once I have downloaded this key, I will be able to launch this instance. So if you want me to communicate with this particular server, which we are going to launch this recently. Okay, this is the one I'm making this server as a server one. Okay, so if I want to communicate this server, I have to convert this key in a different format. So what are the key I have created? Right. Let me put it here. Okay. Let me put okay here I have keys. So I'm going to keep this my key here. AWS demo dot PM. What are the key you create downloaded that's an dot PM format that we have to convert into the dot PPK format. So now for that we need a software called partition load so here we have keys so you have to go into the all files then this is my key select okay save private key click okay then you can give the same name or different name that's fine okay instead of demo i'm just using this one what happened here so there are two keys we have so this is the one this is the original one which you downloaded under dot pem format and the other one which you created that is in a dot ppk format right so now i'm running my windows machine so if i want to communicate this particular server then i need a converted key so this is the server is launched right now so if you even if you want you can see instance id instance type availability zone status and everything is showing even the time also when it has been launched. So now if you want to communicate this server, select the server, scroll down, here you can see the IP address. So this is my IP address of the server. I'm trying to communicate here. Right. And uh, SSH, you can go authorization. Here you have to browse the key which you kept here. Now my key is located here. So this is my key. Select. Now you'll be able to communicate this particular server. Here we have a user called EC2. Iphone user is the default username. So it won't ask your password. So here I just mentioned your my username. I'm not even giving any password. So I have been communicated here. Got it? So like this, you'll be able to launch an instance. You can communicate it. So any questions up to here, guys? Fine, go ahead. Right. So like, like this, once you create it, if you wanted to add any additional storage for this, here we have a tab called Values. Okay. I'm going to create a new value. So just an example, I'm going to create a 5 GB value. Right. So here we have to make sure which availability zone you are going to select. So I'm going to select my availability zone US East 1A. Right. I'm selecting this, then I'm going to create a value. Once you create a value, just refresh this page. 
here you can see the new 5 GB value. It's under available status. It means it has not been associated to any server. See here, there is no information. But if you see other servers, it has been associated to some other servers. Now I wanted to attach this to my server. Select actions, attach value, you can go here. I wanted to attach this to my server one. Then you can attach, right? Once you are done, you don't need to do it anything from the server end. Go here. Okay, if you are not sure, so once it is attached directly, just refresh and you can see here directly, it has been attached, attached to the server one. Got it? And the status also has got changed to in use instead of available. Now, if you want to see that in a server end, just run a command fdisk hyphen L. Right? So this is the root VZ value which you have 12 GB and the one which you created right now, it's in a 5 GB. Okay. Clear. If you want to create a PV um, right, using this PV, you can create. Even if you want, you can create a VZ. We can create. Right? Clear? Any questions, guys, up to here? Sorry, any questions here from anyone? Yeah, fine, fine. Thank you. So now, earlier, what we have, uh, like uh, here, uh, any Linux admin? Yes, I am. Right. So in this case, we have created an VZ. You have an, uh, 5 GB volume here. You have created LV mm -hmm. and you have created a file system, right? Yes. My file system has yes. reached in a 5 GB. I mean, I've created with 5 GB. It has already reached in a 5 GB now. It has got filled, filled, right? Yes. I wanted to yes. extend this space. So how we can proceed mm -hmm. now? Uh, if it is a VM, we need to increase uh, from data store. We have to add it to the VZ. Right. Okay. You mean to say you have to talk to the storage people? Or you have to talk to the virtualization team to get an additional storage, yes. right? VMware team or storage team? Yeah. Either VMware or virtualization team, you have to coordinate some other teams. Then they will assign yeah. a space for you so that that particular space, yeah. again, you will get you know, one more volume here, right? Yeah. So you will get one more, one more layer here. VZ. Again, you have to create a PV and you have to extend your VZ. Then you have to extend your file system. Clear? That's true. So yes. that you have to follow that. Even Amazon also has followed the same process until 2016. In the, in the year of 2017, February 13th, 13th of February, like 1 3, okay? Amazon has introduced a new feature. You no need to get n number of volumes here. Each and every time you're going to get this number of volumes, what will happen? Your n number of volumes is going to be increased more. The count is going to increase, right? So you no need to do yeah. all these steps you can extend your existing volumes itself. So you can do your live value modifications without having any downtime, without stopping your server, without unmounting your file system. You can try to extend your file system. Okay. Or you can say directly, you can extend your value, right? So for that, this comes here. This is your 5 GB value. Select, right? Actions. Here we have a tab called modify value. Now, okay. here we have a right now we have a 5 GB. Don't try to reduce it. If you want, you can extend it in a 6 GB or 7 GB. I'm going to make it in a 7 GB now. Right? And modify. Right. Okay. So here immediately you can come, you can see here. Once you are done, it shows in optimizing, modifying, complete. Three stages it will be there. Okay, mm -hmm. so earlier it's an available status. Then we added it here. It's an in use. Right now in use, but optimizing. Still, it's not optimizing state. So based on the size, it will take in a minute. It's not more than that. Okay, but if you come down to, I mean, if you come back to the server, run the command again. 
So earlier we have a 5 GB here. Is that right? Even if you want, I can scroll down. So I scroll up, I can see here. It's a 5 GB earlier we have. Right? 12 GB and 5 GB. Now, so what about the data? It will be formatted, right? No, it won't be formatted. It will be there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is the option they are giving. So now we have a 12 GB and still the 5 GB has been modified into 7 GB. Right? But when you run the command PVs, here. Then you need to. No need to go for creation in APV, something like that. Nothing, Directly nothing, increase the nothing. Nah, for that, there is a different command I will show you now. Might be you are aware of it. Okay, so 5 GB it has got 7 GB here. For the PV which have been created, it has not been modified. Right? For this, there is a command called PV resize. Right? You have to run this command. Yeah. So that what will happen? Here you can see the count. One physical value has been resized. Okay, so now you run the same command. You can see 7 GB right now. Got it? Yeah. Earlier it's 5 GB. Now it has got changed to 7 GB. So it has been introduced in the year of 2017, guys. So earlier it is not available. So once you are done, okay. you are not allowed to do a modification immediately. For example, right now it's 7 GB, right? I wanted to make this a 9 GB now. Okay. So before you do, even if you want to can cross check here, it's an optimizing stage. So let's assume it, it has been completed. Right now it's an optimizing, it won't allow you. Okay. But let me try that. Let me show you. Modify value. So instead of seven, I'll be making it nine. Try to modify. Okay. Here it will get, a, get an error here. I mean, it will get an error here. Got it? So it cannot be modified. State in an optimizing state. Right. So even if it is not an optimizing optimizing state, also even if you have, if it is completed, still you are trying to do that. Also, it won't allow until your next six hours. So once you have done any value modifications, for the next modification, you have to wait at least in a six hours right now. Okay. Uh, if is the case, uh, if we require any an emergency. Right. Okay. That time can we add as a volume? Yes, you can do that. That are that are always you know, available, right? So what I'm some scenarios, right? Initially, what I mean to say here, you have to do in you know, a forecasting, right? So you are forecasting mm -hmm. like in you know, a 5 GB, you you have expected only 7 GB. You did that, okay? Mm -hmm. Then again, you you realize, okay, I need one more, like a two more GB, right? That you can create mm -hmm. a value, you can assign it, okay? Your but time. if you do the right forecasting, you no need to worry about it. Yeah. Yes. Fine. So once you are done this, it will not be available for the next six hours to do the modifications right now. Why I am using right now the word? Because it may get changed in future. So always Amazon okay. is working with. So for Amazon, they are the competitors. Like that, they are working. Okay. So if other service provider is going to provide the live volume modifications, can be done in a five hours so that people will think okay Amazon is six hours the same option we are getting in Azure it's a five hours okay people will may move right so instead of that same question Amazon itself they are putting it so they are thinking about it so how we can try to reduce this price reduce this time both ways okay not only the timing they are trying to reduce the price as well as long as when you're getting a less price from Amazon you won't move for the next cloud or next any other opportunities like any other alternatives right so all the services all the timings it is going to be keep on reducing in future right so always they are trying to do in a better solutions here so right now it's six hours maybe in future it might be in a 50, 30 minutes or 20 minutes or 15 minutes also okay maybe you can do it in a n number of times also that my option also will come but right now it's not you can't do that you have to wait now six hours right now we'll see one more for example this a uh, 7 gb volume or the 1 gb volume whatever it have we have already been assigned to some other systems it is having some data but i don't want to remove this data from this particular mission for example this is in a 7 gb one okay i don't want to remove this data from here but i need this data to be presented in a different server are different region 
right? So in this case, we have an option called snapshot. So as an image, you can go here and you can create a snapshot. I'm just naming it snap one something. So that you can create a snapshot here. Once you done this, it will get created under snapshots. Okay. So it, here you can see won't by me, public snapshot, private snapshot. So if you go for public snapshots, you can see the old dates as well. Like previous images also is there. 2012. Okay. Here you can see 2015, 2013. Okay. Even 12, 2012. So these are the public images we have. So when you created any image, if it is a public, anybody can able to use it. So if you don't want to use that, okay, what do you have to do while transferring this from this location to any other location? We have an option called modify permissions. Here you can make it as a private. So if you want to make it as a private, so you have to provide other person account number. If not, you can select as a public, then anybody can able to use it. So right now, whatever the snapshot I've been created that's under my North Virginia region. So using this, I wanted to create a value. I have to assign it at a different server. You can go here. You can create a value. If you want, this should be presented in a different region. You can go here. Copy. Here you have to select your destination region. So here you have to select your migrating the different server. region. Yes, exactly. You are trying to migrate this data from one region to another another region but instead of move they kept the old called copy here you understand right if it is a migration yes. the data will not be available in your source location but here mm -hmm. they are giving this data to be available in your source location and as well as your destination location whenever you don't require you can delete it now i will be selecting my destination region called mumbai okay We'll skip this and you can copy. Okay. So once you are done, it will be moved into your Mumbai region. Come here and go into the snapshot. So this is the one, snap one. It's getting created. Clear? I was in Mumbai region right now. Clear, guys? Yes, clear. I'm going back to not to a GNA region. Okay, just wait for 15 minutes, guys. More so, somebody is disconnecting. No problem. Okay, so I wanted to make it very clear, that's why I'm taking this much time. Okay, now once you are running this many servers, so I mean, we have other services as well. Now, if you want to do in a command line, if you are an expert in a command line, I have launched a server through in a GUI as of now. If you want to do in a similar job in a command line, yes, we can do that. Okay. So in this server, we have to, I mean, any one of the server, you have to make it as a AWS CLI server. So it will take some time to explain that. So let's assume it once you have configured. So if you wanted to work with a command line, we can do that. I'm going to explain that. Okay. So I'm going to connect this particular server, SSH, authorization. The key might be, I forgot the key. Okay. This is the key. Is another right key, guys. So I'm just checking the key. So here I've been used the key called uh, IntelliPod iPhone November is the key. I just kept somewhere. I have to search for that. One second. One second, guys.
Okay, so instead of wasting the time, so what we can do? So whatever the server I have launched, so this will make it as a AWS server. Okay, maybe it will take time. So let's finish it. So now we want to done this particular job. We have to, I mean, you know, right? So as of now, we work with some basic Linux commands. It's working. So if you want to make this server as a AWS CLI server, we have to install in a Python packages. I'm going to read it. I'm going to do that. Sorry. Then once it has been configured, you have to cross check whether you have properly installed. So once you have been properly installed, you can list here in a Python packages. Right. So these are the package Python packages has got installed. Now, if you want, you can go here, cross check the Python version it should be a minimum 2.5 and above should not not less than that like now python iphone iphone version okay i'm not raising your voice chandra right are you able to hear me now guys anybody Yes, yes, sir. Right then. So if you're not able to hear me, might be any one of the guys. So that isn't a problem from your guy. Can you please cross check that? Now I have installed in a Python. So it is showing like in a Python version 2.7. Right. So now once you are done that. So you have to cross check. You have to install one more important package that is called an AWS CLI Boto Core. So this is the package. It will help you to work with your command line. Without having this package, you will not be able to work on AWS command line. So we have already done it. So it's getting display. Then what you have to do? You have to cross check that if you want. Then AWS CLI. So it will get display your AWS CLI package and as well as water code. These two packages was required. Fine. So once you're done, so for example, there is a command guys. So to list all your one, I mean, one of the service AWS S3 LS. When I hit this, I'm not getting any output, but I'm expecting an output here. If you go here, there is a service called S3. Okay. If my command it will get now execute properly, I should get an out, output here. For example, right now I don't have any output here. So I'm going to create bucket. Just very quickly, I'm going to do it. Okay. Right now I've created one bucket called Cloud Minds IT. So this should get in this output. Okay. So I'm going to do it. Still, I'm not getting. So for this, what we have to do, you have to configure your key and access key ID. Thank you. Now for this, to you have to use your access key ID and secret access key ID. So for that, you have to go here. Here we have a tab called AWS Security Credentials. Here we have access key ID and secret access key ID. Okay, you should not share this ID to anyone. So I'm going to uh, hide this screen for a second. Even I'm going to stop. Sorry guys. So what I did like I have, I don't want to share the access key ID and the secret access key ID. So if anybody will try the same key. So they are not going to launch the servers in their environment. It will be launching in my environment. Okay. That's why I have been hiding that. So here what we have to do, you have to provide your command called AWS configure. So it will ask your access key ID first. Then second tab AWS secret access key ID. Then you have to provide region name. So in this we have a 16 regions. You have to provide any one region name. Okay. So that is your default region name. Okay, where you are not giving any command, 
you haven't mentioned any region name that particular service it will launch on your default region name or else if you want to run particular job on particular region obviously you have to mention your region name right i did that so now once you run the command called aws s3 ls the earlier one i'm getting an output clear this is what i just created under my service called s3 okay here so i'm going to create one more bucket to make you understand cloud minds it new like this i'm going to create right this is a new one i have created right now so here in my output i have a two so this is what i'm expecting in the command line let's go back run the same command i'm getting the new output as well clear guys any questions up to here pavan ram raja sada siva venu anybody can respond yes. okay no you are good yeah similarly if you wanted to launch any instance also so what how many steps you have been followed to launch an instance right so instead of that also we can do it in a one single command i already prime a command so right now going back to the instances okay so uh, let me show you so i hope it's getting delay for you guys no right so can we continue for 5 minutes now yes yes no problem right so yeah now so in this instances right now we have an a three now three instances up and running right now so i'm going to hit one more command i'm going to hit an i mean going to launch an instance in the command line right now okay see i've already prepared a command aws ec2 run instance this is an your am id count 1 instance type t2 micro okay this is the key name i have given and subnet i have selected and security group so it is going to be launched on c1 if is available to join okay once you did it just come back refresh this page and there is a new instance is going to be launched and again you can see the other one it's going to be launched clear you are available to join c this one any questions even if you want to launch one more if you have any doubt kind of thing just hit one more time fine fine it will get launch one more instance clear okay. so like this if you want to play you can even if you want to stop you want to terminate anything you can be do it in a command line right that's up to you whether you do it in a command line you do it in a gui mode that's depending on the environment it will get change okay as a linux administrator you want to do the thing things in a command line if you like that okay a windows people they can do it in a gui mode how they want they can do it okay yeah thank you guys i i'm done the session here so i'm just uh, waiting for the questions from your side yeah janara just i want to ask one question how does it help for a linux admin so linux good option for aws or uh, devops don't get confused so even if you want to become a devops engineer also you need in a cloud okay okay so aws is a platform like in you know, one of the cloud infrastructure so now if you want to provide a work with an only cloud so aws is the right option okay so where you have a uh, multiple options like if if you want to uh, become a devops engineer so what will happen from there you should know cloud okay here we have a uh, multiple options again for example aws azure okay you should know any one cloud mm -hmm. and again we have a ci and cd tools like svn jenkins maven all these things even bitbucket bamboo okay. that should cover and again we have a configuration management chef ansible puppet okay ansible so, yeah so in these three areas you should have one and even docker and vagrant also is there so the combination of multiple tools is called a is a devops okay what about the docker the docker docker is uh, relating to cloud 
Yes, that's not related to in a cloud exactly. It comes under in DevOps roles. Docker and Vagrant. Oh, yeah. But also Docker also something related to AWS. I mean cloud, right? Cloud technology. Yes, exactly. But what you can do, Docker also you can install on these machines, like in you know, any of the Linux machines. But again, for that the people is using the cloud platform, if not in a physical servers. Okay. Fine. any other questions guys from anyone uh, is there any levels in aws levels we have on a, i mean course has been designed even certifications also we have an fi certifications like aws uh, solution architect associate and sysops and developer these three comes under an associate level okay and the professional level we have a two certifications is it clear siva oh yes yes yeah thank you and uh, yeah thank you. thank you any more questions from anyone so we are covered uh, uh, which level now mm -hmm. so we are going to cover uh, solution architect or uh, yes it's a combination of uh, solution architect and as well as your uh, sysops hello oh pa chandra raghunath guys can you please be in mute okay go ahead so we need siva siva myself siva so we need to learn any extra courses for this or uh, like uh, dev apps uh, or uh, anything else right now i can't say anything so you can enroll for this course so we are going to cover linux and the little bit of linux and as well as aws here okay 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 thanks yeah uh, chandra raghu here chandra raghu here yeah go ahead uh, does this uh, means uh, do we require uh, linux commands for this uh, to learn aws yes i will be providing a document for that also so it's completely in a complete linux document we are going to share with you okay wherever you want we are going to talk about it i mean how it will be useful for it for example if you want to create a users files and as well as vi editor and as well as if you want to stop and start any services right and networking related and even a load balancer we are going to talk all these things so i'm going to talk about all linux commands as well okay so this is a combination of uh, gua and uh, cli both c uh, command line yes okay any any other questions from anyone or did i mention any did i miss any one question as of now aws where uh, 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 we need to work on uh, middle way yeah that will talk an about more uh, in detail okay so it's taking already in a late time okay right yes uh, ram uh, we are uh, running in you know, online sessions and chandra what is the duration of this course if if you know all of us are interested yeah this course will go in a minimum in a more than a month i can say so 5 weeks it will take minimum sometimes it may so get so what about the certification i mean uh, certification uh tell me how what you are looking at this particular program yes it's related to your solution architect certification only so for this once after we come... yeah go ahead go ahead sorry to go ahead go ahead so once after we finish this yeah once after we finish this program can we write the certification i mean yes so for uh, the for that i mean you to clear my certification i have prepared this many set of question papers right so each and every question paper it will have in a 60 questions okay so here it has been clearly mentioned question and answer why this particular answer is correct okay so kind of explanation also i, I put it here I like this. Uh, okay, Chandra, that is fine. Right. Uh, just uh, my question is, um, 
once uh, we gone through the training session uh, are we able to complete that uh, architect definitely architect? definitely you will be able to clear aws solution architect certification okay sure sure just i uh, want to learn know that actually. yeah so, uh, so what is the, how many classes it will be duration is different and the classes will be different right right so duration and class timing so for example every day we are going to run a session in a one and a half hour okay minimum okay so it will take more than 30 hours 30 hours yes is it online or uh, directly on can come down to that class it's online even if you want uh, offline ah uh. okay if you want to offline if you want to come offline uh, just talk with just, we... just talk with them so men to whom i okay. have interacted so they will guide you on it uh -huh. okay and also the thing is how much uh, does it uh, uh, cost for adding this uh, solution of tech uh, certification it's 150 dollars an exam fee mm -hmm. exam fee 10 yeah 150 dollars okay. and chatra last question from my side right uh, as i told you right i'm i'm purely i mean i'm not i'm a non technical guy okay okay so i mean not technical in the sense though probably i might have my degree and other stuff but uh, in my work i started as a developer but later moved into testing and i am now into management role as i told you right 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 so i see this all terminology i forgot everything so will it be tough for me or do you think uh, it it will be no, okay uh, it's not tough for anyone so here uh, even we are going to try and for the uh, pressures as well okay so if you compare with them so you have only forgot they don't know right mm -hmm. so we are going to try in everyone so that that is not a difficult okay i will make you understand but wherever you are not uh, getting follow you are not able to follow me just uh, remind me so that i can explain more about it so that you will you will understand mm -hmm. if anything and where, where are you located in india or us so i'm located in bangalore Bangalore, okay. Okay, fine. Thanks, Chandra. Right. Thank you. Uh, Chandra, do you have uh, your number? Uh, do we need to contact the bank at all? Yeah, you just reach to bank at. No problem. Um, Sir, there is none. Right then, you can take my number, or you can talk to uh, Ramesh also. You can share my number. You can talk yeah, to him. No problem. Just can Sir, you. Right then. Thank you. Any other no, questions? Excuse me, Chandra. Yeah, hi. Tell me. Chandrasekhar. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, this is Niran Jain. Can you can you provide the the recordings daily of this yes, video? Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So each and every session, once the session is getting completed, next one and a half hour you will get the session. Yeah. And I'm recording. Directly it. upload to you, right? For each batch. Yes, yes. So we are going to upload in a drive. So we are going to share with you guys. Okay. Can you provide one complete demo class for us today? Yeah. So, what are the demo? We have done it right now. So that I'm that I, we are going to share with you. See, that means I need one demo. I want to see it. So not this, okay? If right. You, if any, you're any, to... any, no problem. No problem. Our demos is already available in the internet. So, if you want, you can uh, crash like that. Okay. So, still, if you want the other uh, demo, I can share with you. Yeah. That means the the, uh, the middle yeah, section. Because... Uh, Chandra. Yeah, Chandra Shekhar. Go ahead, go ahead. We'll share. I need the middle section of your class, okay? Right then, I will will share it. We'll share it. I understand that. So instead of demo, you are you are checking for any other topic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do. We'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Good day, Chandra. One more question, last one. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, can you provide your number? <laughs> Is it Venu, right? Yes, yes. So I have already pinged you in the chat. Can you take that? Can you check your oh, chat? Sure, sure. Yeah, right. I'll check it. Right then. Thank you. Uh, sorry, timings. No, what would be the class uh, timings daily if we? Uh... Timings it like now uh, 8 p.m. India time or 9 p.m. India time? Right. Okay, because 8 p.m. would be tough for me because I'll come around 9 yeah. o'clock only. From we will we'll make it 9. Is that okay? 
Yeah, yeah. Can we make it 9:30 if it is okay one hour daily? Right. 9 I can fix it, but uh, let me talk to other people so that we can start. I don't have any concern. Okay, Chandra. Yeah, thanks. Right then. Thank you. I shared my email ID also. Just uh... Right then. So here uh Vamshi, right? So can you please everybody uh, can you no, this, this is Pavan this is Pavan Chandra not Vamshi. Pavan you already shared it right earlier. Okay. Okay, can you can you please provide each and every one your email address guides in the chart? Chavali Dad Pavan. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, hello, Venu. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah, tell me. Yes, yeah, sir. Can you please provide your email ID? Once uh, I will check with you on tomorrow and uh, I will provide all the information what you want, sir. R right. I'll be closing the session. So anybody is having still any questions here? If no, thank you. Thanks for everyone. Thanks for joining the session. And happy learning. Yeah. Please reach us to if you have any other training requirements as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.